Pakistani model Kandil Balosh was recently strangled to death by her own brother for dishonoring her family. Balosh had become a controversial figure in Pakistan for posting revealing photographs on Facebook. But the threats against her escalated after she embarrassed Islamic cleric Abdul Kavi by sharing a video of them in a room together. As always, media organizations are reporting that such killings have nothing to do with Islam. Al Jazeera, for instance, quotes Mufti Naim as saying, Her personal life was her business, and killing someone is haram, not permissible in Islam. The brother must be punished. We cannot have any more murders in the name of honor. Killing someone is not permissible in Islam. This is one of the most ridiculous statements ever made. In Surah 9, verse 111 of the Quran, Allah defines Muslims as those who kill and are killed. So how can killing be haram? Killing certain people in certain situations is haram, but there's obviously no blanket prohibition against killing people in Islam. So the real question should be, are these kinds of killings forbidden in Islam? And as we go through the Muslim sources to find the answer to this question, we discover why honor violence is so common in Islam. There were honor killings before Islam. There were honor killings in various ancient civilizations. But as different cultures came into contact with each other, sometimes conquering each other, they often had a moral impact on one another and cultural practices changed. For instance, when the British Empire controlled India, Indian widows in certain areas would be burned alive on the funeral pyres of their husbands. British General Charles James Napier condemned the practice, but Hindu priests defended the burning of widows by saying, it's our custom. General Napier's reply illustrates one historical path to cultural change. He said, so be it. This burning of widows is your custom. Prepare the funeral pile. But my nation also has a custom. When men burn women alive, we hang them and confiscate all their property. Let us all act according to our national customs. Needless to say, things changed very quickly, and cultures have changed in similar ways for thousands of years. Now, when Islam came to Pakistan, honor killings were already a custom. But if honor killings are forbidden in Islam, why didn't the spread of Islam eliminate or at least significantly diminish the custom? Well, Islam had very similar ideas about killing people for certain behaviors, keeping women under strict control, and so on. And the honor killings were simply appropriated for Islamic purposes. If you're wondering how honor killings can be justified in Islam, consider three facts. First, the penalty for leaving Islam is death. In Sahih al Bukhari 6922, Muhammad says, whoever changed his Islamic religion, kill him. Second, apostasy in Islam is much broader than what non-Muslims usually think of when we hear the word apostasy. We think of apostasy as formally renouncing one's religion. But the Quran warns Muslims that you're an apostate if you don't mindlessly accept everything Allah and Muhammad say. Surah 33, verse 36. It is not for a believer, man or woman, when Allah and his messenger have decreed a matter that they should have any option in their decision. And whoever disobeys Allah and his messenger, he has indeed strayed into a plain error. Notice, it is not for a believer to have any option about the rules laid down by Allah and Muhammad. So if you think you don't have to follow them, what does that make you? An unbeliever. Surah 4, verse 65. But know, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them, and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions, and accept them with full submission. You have no real Islamic faith until you have no resistance against Muhammad's decisions, and you submit fully to those decisions. So, if you've recited the Shahada at some point in your life, you were a Muslim. If you're not submitting to the decisions of Allah and Muhammad, you're not a Muslim. And that makes you an apostate. What's the penalty for apostasy? Death. Third, Muslims are required to carry out Allah's penalties even against their own family members. In Sunan ibn Majah 2540, Muhammad commands, Carry out the legal punishments on relatives and strangers. And do not let the fear of blame stop you from carrying out the command of Allah. Carry out 
the legal punishments on relatives. And don't let the fear of blame stop you. So when Kandil Baloch posts revealing pictures of herself all over Facebook and repeatedly challenges Islamic customs and makes fun of a Muslim cleric, is she submitting to the decisions of Allah and Muhammad? Not remotely. According to Islam, then, she was an apostate. What's the penalty for apostasy? Death. Can family members carry out the penalty? Absolutely. And now we can see why the murder of Baloch was celebrated on Twitter. What she doing is disgrace for Pakistan, so she deserved this. A girl who decides to publish her naked pics for sake of publicity. What her brother is supposed to do. Finally, a good news after a long time. Kandil Baloch was a disgrace to Pakistan. She's certainly going to suffer in hell. Her brother did well. She was disgrace as a Pakistani and as a Muslim. Never liked her. Islam doesn't have the moral resources to stop honor killings. So a serious challenge to honor killings isn't going to come from within Islam. It has to come from outside. But since Muhammad's teachings can and are used to defend honor killings, any serious challenge to the practice will have to involve a challenge to the teachings of Muhammad. For the sake of women everywhere, I hope you'll join me in exposing Muhammad as a false prophet. If you'd like to get started, click on this video where I share three verses from the Quran that every woman needs to know.